This is a review for the Dream Z10 Pro. This is usually one of the cheapest robot vacuums on the market that offers self-emptying and small obstacle detection and avoidance. But does it deliver on these features? Does it actually have good obstacle detection and avoidance? And is it a good robot vacuum otherwise? Let's take a look. The Z10 Pro's airflow was measured at 22 CFM. Its suction was measured at 0.41 kPa. In our carpet stress test, the Z10 Pro picked up all debris types very well. This robot has a slightly above average size direct cleaning path with a brush roll compartment that's about 6.75 inches wide. Its overall cleaning path is even wider as it uses its side brush to pull debris from the perimeter of the robot into its direct cleaning path. Like most other robot vacuums we tested, the Z10 Pro also used repeated movement over the same areas to clean up well in this test over time. In our carpet deep clean test on default power, the Z10 Pro picked up 7 grams of debris after 3 passes over an area of carpet embedded with 30 grams of fine debris. On maximum power, it picked up 9 grams of debris. In our hard floor stress test, the Z10 Pro once again picked up all debris types well. Again, it used repeated movement over the same areas to clean up well in this test over time. The Z10 Pro also performed well cleaning edges. It gets sufficiently close to the edge to clean it properly when moving close and parallel to it. The Z10 Pro did not get a great result in our robot vacuum crevice test on default power, though it did perform slightly better on maximum power. In our human hair pickup test, the Z10 Pro picked up all the hair, but most of that hair wasn't pulled into its dustbin. 70 to 90% of the hair it picked up tangled around its brush roll and had to be cleaned off manually. This robot is equipped with two front-facing lasers, which give it the ability to detect and avoid smaller obstacles. We'll look at this feature more closely later, but for now, note how it caused the Z10 Pro to path around very erratically in our pet hair pickup test. The robot initially mistakenly detected certain tufts of hair as obstacles it needed to avoid, which caused it to repeatedly change course compared to its regular cleaning pattern. It would eventually path over most of the tufts, but still didn't pick up all of them. Looking at pickup a bit more closely, we can see that even when it did path over the tufts, it had some trouble pulling certain tufts of hair all the way underneath itself. And even those tufts that it did manage to pull underneath weren't all properly pulled all the way past its brush roll and into its dustbin. We know this because several tufts were left behind on the surface when we picked up the robot after the test. Clearly, the Z10 Pro did not perform well in this test. The Z10 Pro features a mop attachment with an integrated reservoir. The reservoir's water flow onto the mopping pad is controlled electronically via the Mi Home Companion app. We found that most mopping robots mop the best in our dried on stain test with moderate water flow. However, this was not the case for the Z10 Pro. It performed very poorly in this test with only a moderate amount of water flowing onto its mopping pad. So we tested it again on a higher water flow setting. On this setting, it performed much better, but it still left behind some residue after its first cleaning cycle. That's after approximately two and a half minutes of cleaning time. Top mopping robots didn't leave behind any residue after similar cleaning time. The most likely culprit for the Z10 Pro's below average performance in this test is the size of its mopping pad. It's considerably smaller than equivalent pads of top performing mopping robots. Next, we tested the Z10 Pro's cleaning efficiency and coverage. We did so in two different environments, an empty room and a cluttered room. In our empty room testing, we first see how the Z10 Pro uses its top mounted laser to navigate in a very precise row by row pattern across the room. In this first trial, in which it first generates a map of the room, it first moves in horizontal rows and then in vertical rows. It does unnecessarily path toward the left side of the room at the end of the test, almost like it's double checking if there's a way out of the room or if the barrier is movable. In the second trial in which it has already mapped the room, it only moves in vertical rows. At the end of the run, the robot again unnecessarily bounces against the left edge of the room. The Z10 Pro does get good complete coverage of the whole room in both trials. In our clutter room testing, there's not much room for row by row cleaning. Instead, we're looking for pathing efficiency and coverage around different types of larger obstacles. In the first trial, in which the robot first generates a map of the room, we see it pathing around most obstacles with reasonable efficiency and good coverage. 
about midway through the test, it does rotate several times in place, almost like it's stuck in this corner, but it eventually moves out of this area and continues on with its regular cleaning pattern. This trial continues on for several more minutes. In this mapping run, the robot is especially redundant in its coverage across the room. In the second and third trial, after the robot has already mapped the room, we see quicker runs with similar efficiency, but much less redundancy. We replaced all of the larger obstacles used for our clutter room testing with much smaller obstacles to test the robot's obstacle detection and avoidance. In these tests, the Z10 Pro performed quite poorly. In this first trial, it seems to recognize this power cord, though it still grazes past it. It then proceeds to run right over this pet waste prop. It seems to recognize, but still pushes around the rest of the obstacles on the course. The second trial starts exactly the same way the first trial started, but this time the pet waste prop actually got stuck underneath the robot, so we ended the trial early. In this third trial, certain obstacles, like the socks, are pushed around even more than they were during the first trial, and the robot once again runs right over this pet waste prop. The bottom line here is that the Z10 Pro's obstacle detection and avoidance is not very good, at least not according to our testing. Other important specifications and test results we considered for this review are summarized here. Note especially that this is a full-fledged mapping robot that has the ability to map multiple floors of your home. And using the Mi Home Companion app, you can set the robot to clean specific parts of the generated map or set it to stay out of certain parts of the map. You can also label different parts of the map, though you can't put a space between words when you make a label. This is a unique limitation that we've only seen on a few mapping robot vacuums we've tested. In the same chart, also note the Z10 Pro's runtime, bin volume, and noise output, and how those specifications and test results compare to the average for all of the robot vacuums we've tested so far. Lastly, note the robot's diameter and height. These dimensions make the Z10 Pro one of the larger robot vacuums we've tested. Moving on to what we like and dislike about this vacuum, first let's talk about what we like. The Z10 Pro has excellent airflow. It does a great job picking up surface level debris on carpet and hard floors. It also cleans edges well, and it deep cleans carpet well for a robot vacuum. This robot also has good battery life and low noise output. We also like that it provides self-empty functionality and that it does so at a very competitive price point. Moving on to what we dislike about this vacuum, the Z10 Pro had quite a bit of trouble picking up tufts of shorter hair in our pet hair pickup testing. It also struggled a bit in our mopping test with its smaller mopping pad. The robot also demonstrated a few minor padding inefficiencies in our empty room and clutter room testing though the biggest disappointment was its poor performance in our obstacle detection and avoidance testing. This robot couldn't reliably detect or avoid any of the obstacles we used to test its functionality. In terms of general recommendations, you definitely have to temper your expectations for this robot. It's marketed as being highly autonomous, being able to self-empty and automatically detect and avoid small obstacles. However, after testing, we now know that it only does one of these things with a high level of competence, self-emptying. It does not reliably detect and avoid small obstacles. That being said, many competitors in the same price range don't even have this feature at all. And if you take obstacle detection and avoidance out of the equation, the Z10 Pro stacks up against those other options fairly well. It's not the best self-empty option at its price, but it is a reasonable alternative, especially if you can find it at a deep discount. See the description of this video for a link to check the Z10 Pro's current pricing, as well as a link to the latest updated list of all of the robot vacuums we recommend, and thank you for watching.